also offer several workshops on site um, during the year. And uh, we also offer a mentoring scheme for museum educators. And you can always engage in one of our working groups. If you don't know about those activities, please check out our website. And today we are super happy to have with us our facilitator Pepin Wilbers from Studio Lauter. One Hello. Of the founders of Studio Lauter. Hello, Pepin. And he has a very huge experience in the museum world. And we are happy to hear more about uh, you in a few seconds, Pepin, um, once we start the session. And before I hand over to Pepin, I just uh, want to let the audience know um, that there will be a Q&A session at the end after 45, 50 minutes. Um, and you can ask your questions during the, um, through the chat function uh, and Pepin will be there to answer those questions at the end of the session. And now and I, I hand over to you, Pepin, the floor is yours and have a good yeah. session. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, very nice uh, to be invited here. Um, I'm a partner uh, and founder of Studio Lauter, and that's an, uh, we call it a content design studio, content design for museum studio here in Amsterdam. Um, I, I am from origin an, an historian, and since more than 24 years, uh, 25 years, I'm working solely for the museum and heritage sector. Um, we started out as a media producer for, uh, for, for museums. And in the years, we more and more evolved to a uh, studio uh, specialized in what we call content design or the design of the narrative, the design of the story. And today I want to talk to you about that, what it means and uh, how we do it. Um, this boy is not happy. He is sitting there and he is having an emotion, and maybe we can call this emotion uh, boredom. He's bored, um, and um, he has reasons to be. The, uh, you don't know what he's looking at exactly. Um, the walls are not nicely painted. They're a bit, they're a bit, bit, bit smudgy. Um, there is no. Uh, means to tell him something, um, what, what's happening here. Um, this is a museum and a lot of, uh, still a lot of people think about museums as a bit boring places where they sometimes have to go with school or with the parents or because it, 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 it looks good. Um, but of course, this doesn't have to be. And uh, we are all here trying to make our museums to uh, places where people want to go, where they even want to have an, uh, an unforgettable experience and a meaningful experience where they can learn something and where, can, where they also can feel something and where, where they can take something home um, that has value for them. But how do you make such a place? Well, one of the first things uh, to realize, and it's a very important thing, is that um, a museum is a designed place. It's not a place that just exists, but every aspect of a museum is made by humans, is, is uh, thought of and is designed. Is, and there, there are choices made, uh, and those choices led to the museum as we know it. For instance, there is uh, thought about the location, where to put a museum. It's, uh, a lot of museums are in the middle of the town, uh, uh, mostly an important town. The, the, the capital of a city or the capital of a province. So the location is important. Architecture is very important. Museums are uh, often places that you can see from far and that, you, that, that have a kind of grandeur. Uh, new museums are billions uh, spent on, on architecture that make almost like palace look uh, like uh, buildings. The way the building is laid out, the way you walk through it, uh, the, the way the objects are spread around the rooms, the techniques that are used to show the objects, to light objects, and all the means that are used to tell a story around those objects, it are all design things and um, uh, all things that, that are carefully well thought about, 
decided about and, and all those design elements make the museum. Um, we think that also the story is something that you can design. And the story does not live in the air and you can pull it out. Now also a story is, an, uh, is something that you well, came up with and that you design. And that is why we say uh, one of the disciplines you need when you are making, making a museum is what we call content design. And that is a design discipline that focuses on the narrative of the museum. What are you going to tell? And we think that you can use content design for museum to tell your story in the most powerful, uh, powerful way possible so that you can create a visitor experience that is unforgettable. And it sounds very big, but I think that you all have memories when you were a child or when you were on certain museums that you never forget. The first time I went into the Louvre uh, when I was, I believe, 10 years old, and I'm not from France, uh, that is something that I will never forget. And uh, there are more moments in museums that, that were so impactful, um, sometimes because of the objects that, that were shown, but also because the building was, was, was big or uh, or other things that, that were special about. And I, there is an, an open air museum in the Netherlands and I smelled the, the fires in the old farmhouses there. And that was also a, a, a memory for me that was very important, that, I, that formed me. So unforgettable experiences can be made in museums and content design can be part of that. Um, we at Studio Loud are a content design studio. We, we, we purely focus on making stories and uh, help making stories unf unforgettable. And to do that, we have a method and we call that emotion design. And I want to talk to you about this emotion design and the way we use it and the way it works. It has to do about facts, meaning and emotion. But I will be talking about it later. Um, we work for a lot of museums, small and big, uh, in the Netherlands and abroad. Um, the, the big picture is a project we uh, we uh, made this year that won the Museum Heritage Award in London. Uh, that is for the Film Museum I in Amsterdam, and it is a digital representation of the collection of uh, their uh, movies. And we used uh, AI techniques there to make a new way of browsing this this collection. So. Uh, yeah, that's, that's some things uh, uh, we, we also do. Um, we do projects abroad. We work also in the Middle East, in Scandinavia. Uh, and, uh, well, sometimes projects can be very big, but we do also small things. Um, and we work also for places, what, yeah, we call it places with a story, so not museums in the strict sense, but um, sometimes uh, heritage locations or sometimes places that are well defined by history of by what what took place there like the story of the titanic in belfast we uh, did a big refurbishment uh, at the beginning of this year well that's enough about that um so a museum is a designed place that's one important thing so if you are making a museum you have the power to to form a museum like you want. Uh, and that is very important. Um, the second thing that is very important to, to, to take into notice is that, and it sounds like an open door, but it, it's, it's really important. A museum is part of society. Um, so a museum is not a thing that stands on its own. It's a, a kind of tower in which people are just invited to be very quiet and look at the things. But the museum is part of society. Uh, so when we are designing a museum, we have to look to connections with this society when we are designing. Um, and of course, we learned that from Peter Fergo in the 80s with, with his book, New Museology. Um, I think you, you, you have, of course, heard from this, this, this movement. Um, the museum as we knew it, yeah, the, the temple-like building where you can in all go in and, and see their, the truth and, uh, and the beauty uh, that is presented there by a group of, uh, of people who know what's the truth and what's the beauty. Um, 
of course it's a bit black and white but that museum um yeah doesn't hold any longer because uh, people want to get in society wants to get in um uh, the, the, the meaning of what's happening there is, is constantly changing and uh the, the last year we, we grow to a new kind of museum um and that is much more uh an, an open place where people uh, has to has to feel welcome that is, is all about inclusivity that is about reaching new publics that is about looking critically to your own collection um, uh, in, in, in short, a, a place that is connected with uh, the world around it and the people who live there. Um, and it's important to realize when you are um, designing a story, because if you, you can say very simple, a museum has objects, uh, those objects represent stories about the founding of my country, about uh, the work my grandfather did, uh, uh, about the history of my town and those stories mean something for me they tell me why i'm a dutchman or they tell me why i'm proud on, uh, on, on uh, farmers that worked here in, in the netherlands for instance and um, uh, very easily said if you put those objects with those stories uh, behind them and the, and the meanings they represent together you have an exposition and this whole exposition of this whole museum also tells his own story and his, has his own meaning. And you put a nice border around it, and this is the museum. But uh, the new museology learned is that that's no longer the, the, the way it works because people want to get in and they want to connect with those stories and uh, that are people from all different kind of backgrounds. And um, this, this, this museum lives in a world that is changing constantly and um, that is constantly uh, looking for new meanings for new stories. So if you are designing a story for a museum, you have to take this into account. And you have to understand that the things you are telling um, are connected to the people you are telling it to and to, in, into the place in the society in which you are telling them. And we think there are two things to keys to make those connections between your public and between the, the society in which you are operating. And those, key, those two keys are emotion and meaning. And that is what emotion design is all about. That is to make very explicit in your story that you're telling, what is the emotion and what is the meaning of your story. Um, so that is what, in our opinion, content design and emotion design uh, in the heart is what it's all about. Um, it's also in the heart of our own philosophy and of our own yeah, vision, uh, because we think that people need meaningful stories to help them understand the world that surrounds them. Uh, and we think that museums are places, in, uh, and museums are the, 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 the keepers of those stories. And, and uh, they have a very important role in society to tell those stories. Um, with all the care that needs uh, uh, that needs that those stories needs, and the second thing is that if you want to connect to a story, uh, emotion helps. If you if you feel something, um, you are more open to uh, to the story and to the meaning of the story, and you also remember the message better. Um, but what what does it, this mean? A, a meaningful emotional are museums and meaning what, what does it mean well we think that museums are meaningful places sometimes we say it are the, the churches of the modern age the cathedrals of the modern age and um uh, or the new new churches um and if you look at the buildings itself it almost looked like this it is almost spiritual architecture uh, in which you can have a kind of yeah, almost spiritual experience, uh, come to yourself, uh, experience things that, that you cannot put into words, uh, have, have feelings, almost like uh, you have it in a, in a, in a, in a big church. Um, and um, sometimes it is really uh, uh, deliberately put to it. Why, why is there a pyramid in front of the, of the Louvre? Um, it's, it's, a, it's a bold choice to have such a mystic addition to an, to an old building. Um, and um, 
uh, right at, at the bottom, it's almost as if all the tourists are worshipping this one piece of art, like like it's it's uh, it's a thing in a uh, in a cathedral in a church, like the bones of an of an holy man. Um, and you see that in in uh, new and emerging countries in the in the Middle East, for instance, the the most money is spent, the most care goes to the building. Uh, we worked for the building at the uh, right bottom in, in Qatar, the new national museum. The collection that is housed in this building could also be in a, in a very small building that's in a, just in a provincial museum. Um, but the building itself tells a story. This is important. This is who we are. This is, this is uh, what we want to tell to the world, uh, what, what we think is important. And the building shows it like a big cathedral in, in an old middle-aged town. Um, but what is this meaning that those museums want to tell or want to show? Um, we think, and of course this is a bit simplification, but it's interesting to go along with this for, for, a, um, uh, for, 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 for a little time. We think that all the stories that are told in museums can be brought back to three basic questions. And it is the big question of identity. Who am I or who are we or who are you? And do you belong here or do you not belong here? Do I belong here? The second very important question is what, is what threatens me and what threatens you and what threatens us? So that's a story about fear and anger. And the third is stories about love, the, the things that make uh, uh, live life worth living. Um, so, three big stories that you can see in, in almost every museum. For instance, identity. Um, I told you already about the museum in Qatar. That's all about who are we? Uh, the Qatar people in a, in a nation that does not, uh, uh, that, it's, that is uh, not so old, it's a young nation, so they need their identity expressed. And they say, well, our identity is a combination of history and nature. We are part of the, of the big desert, and uh, uh, that is why they've got big projections of the nature that is surrounding them, really big projections. And in this, uh, the collection is shown, and there is a special place for children to uh, also experience uh, the, uh, the identity of the country they live in. Um, you can also see it as not as the identity of a nation, but maybe the identity of humankind itself. So a lot of, uh, uh, of, of um, uh, Volkenkundige museums, ethnological museums, uh, are about uh, uh, we, who, who are we and how are we connected to our culture. Um, very nice museum in Bergen, in uh, Norway, the University Museum. They uh, are an, uh, an, 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 uh, a natural history museum. But the first thing you see when you when you enter the, 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 the museum is the showcase right at the bottom, and it is a model of a, of a woman holding a baby. So the message here is: Who are we? We are animals. We are part of the biodiversity of, of, the, of nature, part of the animal world. And there is also a moving showcase. And in the showcase, there are all natural uh, objects. And one of the objects is a sleeping child. So this is a very powerful way of storytelling and of telling the story of who we are. We are animals. Um, a lot of museums also uh, use art to uh, tell who they are. Here in the Netherlands, Amsterdam, the Rijksmuseum is a very good example of it. And what is also nice to see left is the, um, the, the, the museum is built in a Protestant country, but the architect was a real Catholic man who built over 90 uh, churches in, uh, in the Netherlands. He also built the Rijksmuseum and he built it as a church. As, as, uh, at, the end, at the end of this big gallery, you see the night watch made by Rembrandt, and that is the most beautiful thing uh, we here in Holland made. So it's presented. So who are we? We are this beautiful art. That is who we are. So this is also a story about identity, you could say. 
totally different kind of story is uh, stories about fear. And the first thing you think about is, of course, the, the Holocaust. A lot of museums uh, and places in, in Europe um, uh, um, tell the story of the Holocaust. And of course, the big message, the big meaning is never again, uh, uh, just by showing what people can do to each other. You also say, well, maybe it's a good idea to never do this again. And especially in today's society, that's a message that I think is keeps important and is, is still very important to, uh, to keep, uh, keep telling. Um, but of course, more general war museums tell also stories about what we are afraid for. And sometimes that is also a bit interesting. Um, uh, and, and it has two sides. Um, um, some museums, uh, take a different angle uh, to, to make the story interesting. It's still a story about what we are afraid for and what threatens us, war. But this museum is told by children. The, 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 the war in, um, in the Yugoslavia states is told from the perspective of children. So you tell the same story, but with a very different angle. So it comes, um, yeah, it, it really comes to you in a very, very hard way. But of course, you can also make stories about what is what threatens us. Uh, that doesn't have to do with war, but death is something. And um, this is, of course, a very commercial uh, exhibition about the body, but it also shows yeah, dead, dead bodies. And, and it's, it's uh, very frightening, but also very fascinating. Like you see, the, the two boys right at the bottom look fascinated to these dead bodies. And there are, uh, of course, new stories that threaten us. The climate apocalypse is uh, getting more and more uh, a place in the museums. And, and uh, a lot of uh, art is made about it. And it's a story that is, of course, very uh, urgent at the moment to tell. The third big story that, uh, that, we, uh, that we see is our stories about love. What makes life worth living? Um, the Raders Museum in Leiden here in the Netherlands uh, is a museum about nature history, natural history. And uh, they decided to not tell anything about the climate change, to not make it complicated, but just to show the beauty of life. So when you enter the building, the first you see is the, the picture at the left, and it is a very big, nice, uh, almost a parade of, of animals and all nice animals with fur, hair, they, they look nice, not bones, just um, uh, animals that you that you almost would touch. Sometimes people also climb on it and they touch it. And it's a very approachable story. And uh, a lot of people can relate to it. And uh, this museum um, pulls a lot of visitors that normally are not tended to go to museums. So they, they target new groups by this love story for the beauty of life. And they say, well, once people love nature, they also are willing to protect it. Um, but you can also do it on a more uh, abstract way. This is an, an, a museum in our own museum island in Japan. And this yeah, it's almost an installation. It is one building with one artwork in it. And it's all about experiencing life and nature uh, in, a, in a very, uh, well, yeah, almost uh, in a meditation way, you see very small drops, drops of water emerging uh, from the ground and you have an open contact with outside. And the whole story here is experience what life is and what is beautiful about life. Um, there are more museums there that constantly uh, make connections between art, nature, inside, outside. Um, there is not a lot of information given, it's an experiential museum that lets you let you feel what life is about um literary museums about love this is an, uh, it's a very nice uh, museum in zagreb uh, made yeah, it's an, um, uh, a project in which people can send in objects that have to do with uh, a broken relationship um, and in that sense it's about love and what love means for people. So it's a museum about love via broken relationships. 
Um, yeah, and um, uh, of course, I say there are three stories, but a lot of museums sometimes tell two stories, like here in, in uh, Paris, in the Musée National d'Histoire Naturelle, uh, at the one side, you, there, there is life and the, the, the beauty of life, and in the other side, you see death, and you see bones. So, of course, you can combine those stories, but um, it's a nice exercise to look at your own museum, to look at museums where you, where you are going, and to see what, what, is the, what is the big story they are telling here. So that is the, 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 the meaning that's behind the story. And then the other thing is the emotion. And um, you can also call it genre. Uh, and that is a very normal thing that is always used in films and in books, in music. Um, and uh, especially in, in films and books, the dominant emotion defines the genre. So it's a thriller. You will be afraid, or you will be in love, and it's a romance, or you can you can uh, have a laugh, and then it's a comedy, or you can get thrilled. It's an adventure. Um, museums don't use those kind of genres. They mostly are divided by the subject, or the or the or the even the, the kind of objects that they that they show. So we've got art museums, history museums, science museums, natural history museums, um, but they don't use a lot of emotional genres um, but it is possible and we think it's very interesting because this emotion helps you to connect to the story um, the genre that's seen very very often is of course the documentary um, and um, Louvre Lance is a very good example of it and, and I think it's a very very nice museum um, that shows on a very simple but clear way the, the development of art throughout time and throughout different cultures um, without a lot of storytelling is very clear uh, uh, in a documentary style. You can also make a drama of a story. This is an exhibition we made about Mata Hari, the, the, uh, the, the woman spy in the First World War, or she wasn't actually a spy and she was executed. So very dramatic story. And we made uh, a real dramatic uh, uh, story about it, in which you uh, have a big flashback and you discover why she was executed and what happened. And we used very dramatic means, uh, almost as if you were watching a play, uh, a lot of light, uh, uh, some simple um, scenographic means. And um, what we saw that people were really drawn into this story and, and in the end we were, were very touched by, by her story, by her personal drama. You can also make a, 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 a museum like a big adventure, that is what we did in, in Qatar, in the children uh, uh, exhibitions we made there, and uh, for instance in, uh, in the section about the sea, um, there were no objects but it was one big adventure how the Qataris in early days went to sea to uh, to find, um, um, uh, how do you call it, the pearl, uh, pearls, pearl diving that they, they did. It was their one economic thing they did. They used special ship, ships for it. And aboard of those ships, you had to cook for yourself. And you can make fishes. So every element is about this adventure of going on a ship. Um, and together, um, yeah, you, it, it tells the story of who countries are, of identity, in the form of this pearl diving. But the children can really go on an adventure. Action uh, can also be, uh, be a genre that you can use. It is the, the, the museum in Denmark, the Tirpitz Museum, in, in which you are really part of the action of, uh, of, of the war. Uh, it's very immersive, surrounding, and it's if, as if you are on a big uh, movie set. You can also use uh, Maison Satie there, there, uh, uh, to, to try to, to, to show what the musical of Eric Satie is about. They made all kinds of yeah, almost comic installations that, uh, that, that evolve around his ideas and his music. So it's a very lighthearted uh, uh, comic experience and uh, one that, that is used a lot as, uh, as, as a good example is the Musée de la Chasse, uh, a museum about hunting in, uh, in Paris. And 
yeah, that's of course a, a subject that that is a bit out of time and out of date to talk about. But they had a big collection of, of stuffed animals and what to do with it. And they used humor and absurdism to tell a story about, well, our relation to nature and to, uh, to, to hunting. And they, they uh, asked uh, artists to, be, uh, to do residences there and to make a kind of building in which you fall from one boulder into the other. Um, why it's important to, to, to use emotion in, in telling your story is that people can connect to your story and they can, uh, um, yeah, the, the, this is what uh, Angelou says, uh, people will never forget how you made them feel. That, that uh, feeling and emotion can make an experience unforgettable. The thing I felt when I, I went down first the first time in the Louvre through the uh, and so the big space there, that is something I will remember. And um, the smells I smelled in the open air museum when I was in an old farm with the fire, that are things that I will remember because I felt it. And it was not told to me on a, on a big on a, on a text uh, label, or it was not told by me with, in, in my ear. I, I was really part of it. But that's why emotion is important. But how do you do that? How do you get meaning and emotion in your story? Well, what we try to do is to be very, very, very explicit about it. Uh, we try not to be shy, but we try to really pinpoint what is the meaning of the story and what is the emotion. And we do that by dissecting the story into four layers. And the thing is that the facts layer is almost never a problem because museums are very clear facts. Uh, I think they are the, almost the best in the world, in fact. They know their collections very good and now all the stories connected to the, to the collections. Um, so that's not a problem. And mostly they come to us and they say, well, I've got this and this and this. I want to tell here is the, uh, are all the papers and, and the object list, good lab. Or they can't come to us and they say, we want a VR experience because that, that, that's nice for children. So they looked uh, at the how. So those two extremities, the facts and the how, that's what mostly is seen first in the story. But we think that the heart of the story is in the middle and that is the meaning and the emotion. And what does it mean? Um, the facts, you can say, that are the things that you will learn when you are in a museum. But the important question is, why do I have to learn it? Why do I have to look at those objects? Why do I have to go into this museum? What does this mean for me? So it's very important, and we, we try to do it with also our museums we work for, to keep pushing this question. Why do you visit, does your visitor have to look at this? Why, do, do, why do you, does your visitor have to listen to what you are, uh, are telling or to look at what you are showing? And the second thing we want to ask is, what do you want your visitor to feel? Do you want to, uh, to make your visitor afraid of things, or do you want to uh, we once had, an, uh, had a client who said, my museum is about the love that I feel for the, for the, the, the place that I live. So I want to let the visitor fall in love with the Achterhoek, that is the place where she lived. So we made an, an exhibition about falling in love uh, on the Achterhoek. Um, and when you can pinpoint the emotion and the meaning, uh, and you know your facts, the step to the how is mostly not so very hard because you know what you want to tell, you know why you want to tell it, and you know what you want to let your visitor feel. So the next step is, well, what means do we need? In the museum that we want to let people fall in love, we made a big swing. You can sit on a swing like a an, an, an youngster feeling in love and um, uh, uh, and, and, and sit while, while swinging, you can look at all kinds of movies about the surroundings. Um, well, of course, we work a lot of the time together with museums and then we say, well, the, the, the facts, that is really the thing that the museum is good at. The how is mostly the thing of designers, of mostly external specialists who can make movies, who can make showcases, who can write perfect uh, audio tours. And the, the middle, the meaning and the emotion is something you have to do together because 
That is, in the end, the heart of what you are trying to say. Um, well, uh, we have some time, and so I would like to show one example of a project we did, and uh, I would like to show the emotion design behind it, so that it gets a bit more practical, um, and to be uh, uh, to understand what the project is about, I would like to show a little movie. Oh. In de zomer van 2017 besloot het Mauritshuis om deze buste van Johan Maurits van Nassau-Siegen niet langer in de foyer te tonen. Een paar maanden later zorgde dit voor ophef. We spraken van een Twitterstorm. Het museum zou een nationale held van zijn voetstuk hebben gestoten. En als museum moesten we hier iets mee. Het is de taak van het museum om te zorgen dat de feiten kloppen, hoezeer de interpretatie ook beweegt. In de tentoonstelling is dit bewogen beeld het dragende concept waarmee we samen met de bezoeker op zoek gaan naar Johan Maurits. We hebben een diverse groep mensen uitgenodigd om hun verhaal te delen bij de kunstwerken in de tentoonstelling. In totaal gaat het om 46 verschillende auteurs die vanuit hun expertise, hun achtergrond, perspectief kunnen delen bij de kunstwerken. En al die bijdragen, teksten en meningen zijn te lezen op iPads. Zonder volgorde, zonder chronologie, zonder rode draad. De bezoeker die kan zelf lezen, kijken en bedenken wat hij ziet. Een lief meisje uit de 17e eeuw of een door slaaf gemaakte geproduceerd luxe product. Een trotse legerleider of een besmuikt lachende slavenhandelaar. De tentoonstelling gaat over beeldvorming en beeldinterpretatie. Als ontwerpers wilden we graag een visuele uitspraak doen. Dit is het Mauritshuis, gemaakt van suiker. Al in de tijd van Johan Maurits heette het het Suikerpaleis. Een verwijzing naar de koloniale achtergrond van de herkomst van het bouwkapitaal. En met een in mallen gegoten oplage van ruim 300 bustes hebben we de Twitterstorm de tentoonstelling binnengehaald. We hadden een lastige vraag. Hoe vertel je als kunstmuseum een verhaal over een nationale held met een slavernijverleden die ook nog eens de naamgever is van het museum en daarom onlosmakelijk verbonden is met het instituut? Je weet wel van de Nederlandse helden, maar je vergeet heel vaak de donkere kant van die helden. Want het is ook belangrijk dat wij als Nederlanders gewoon dit soort dingen weten. Ik vind het vooral heel mooi dat het museum een reactie geeft op wat er allemaal gebeurt in de media. En ook een goede reactie, een stevige reactie. De tentoonstelling is een succes. Geen nieuwe Twitterstorm, maar goede gesprekken. En voor ons het startpunt van een diepgravend onderzoeksproject naar onze naamgever. Oké, okay. um, this is a project from a few years ago, um, I believe just before the, the pandemic. Um, um, but it was an important project for the museum, the Maurits Huis, um, because there was a lot of, uh, well, it was in the, shown in the movie, a lot to do about uh, the, the, not the founder of the museum, but the, the founder of the house, uh, Johan Maurits. Um, and he started the, the slave trade in the Netherlands, the, the, the triangle uh, trade with Africa, Europe and uh, South America. Um, so, yeah, the, the building was, uh, was, was founded with money that was earned by, by the slave trading. Um, in a long time of history, that was a story that was not even really told, it was not important. But of course, these kind of stories get very important. So the Maurits House was, was looking for a way to talk about it. So we, we came together uh, and we had a lot of books about it and um, we used our emotion design method. And um, well, one of the things that they uh, said that they really didn't know, know a lot about him. So they missed a little bit on the facts because it was never really um, explored this subject. The research was not, not, not done uh, very good. So one of the things they did, they started a research program. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's now finished, but they, they worked for a few years on it. And the second thing that they said, well, what we find very important is that nowadays a lot of people are shouting everything. Um, and that is the Twitter storm. Right? The, the, there were even 
almost death threat uh, to the director of the museum. And they said, as a museum, we think it's very important that people understand that uh, you have facts in your opinions and that it's important that there are places where you can base your opinion on and, and uh, where you can have the, the freedom and the space to, to think and to, well, to understand the perspectives on, for instance, the past can change. Uh, so we wanted to make a space in which you could reflect and could think so that uh, that told us a bit about emotion. It has to be a, a reflective thing. Um, and that helped us to, to make this exhibition. So the, the emotion design could be the facts were the life of Johan Mauritz and a small selection of paintings from the Mauritz house that uh, were from this period. Some paintings were even f uh, that, he, that Johan Mauritz uh, was, uh, uh, that were, were made in uh, South America and Brazil in the time that Johan Mauritz were there. And the meaning was that our image of history is constantly shifting. Um, and you have to realize that, uh, but it is also important that you keep basing that on facts and that you respect nuance and that you respect each other in it. So, like I said, emotion is contemplation and awareness. And in the end, we made an, a layered story in which we made space for these different steps to experience. So we made very fact-like elements in the, uh, in the exhibition, uh, an, an objective timeline in which we only said in this year, this happened, in this year, this happened. And we tried not to be steering, but we tried to, well, to lay down the facts. So we didn't use pictures in it. We didn't use color in it, uh, only black and white. Um, and on the walls, we made a projection in which we showed uh, things that happened that we know that happened in the period we are talking about. So, for instance, this is a big uh, uh, a war in which Jan Maurits was entangled and where he lost his brother, for instance. Um, and we showed this with uh, texts on the wall uh, and we showed um, uh, visuals that, uh, that also showed things about that time period. And one of the things that uh, this painting of this African woman uh, was a final painting. And we also showed two studies that the painter made. And in one study that was also in color, um, see her, her nice fruit basket was not a nice fruit basket. It was just something. And her skirt was um, more an, uh, a rag that she was, was wearing. So the final painting is made much more beautiful. In the first sketch of this woman, we saw an, an, uh, an, a mark on her arm with the initials of Johan Maurits in it. So they deliberately did not show that on the, on the final painting. So they felt that what they were doing maybe was not uh, totally uh, uh, yeah, correct, so to say. They felt that there was some tension in this. And by just showing those paintings, you could already think for yourself what, what's happening there. Um, the Twitter war we showed just by showing those tweets and, and, and when you just show them, you see what, yeah, what, what, what heavy and what idiot it, this is, this, this, this shouting at each other without uh, even uh, any, uh, any knowledge of what, what actually happened. Uh, but more important is that we use the art collection to show the public that Literally, uh, the, your, your, your vision or your perspective on past can change. So we asked different scholars and different opinion makers, well, informed opinion makers, uh, but mostly scholars in the Netherlands. Um, so three per artwork to, to maybe ask them, what do you see in this painting? And um, this is a, the middle is, an, is an, I don't know who it is, but it is an, uh, an uh, an uh, important woman, and uh, there is a lot to tell about this woman, but another scholar said, who is this uh, black boy who is standing there? And they did research and they know in the end who it was. And the first art historian, historians, they told more about the nice element here and that the color of this uh, servant is the same as the color of the drapery here, so there is a, it's a nice diagonal. Um, 
So it's even not a person. And, uh, and other scholars show that this is a real person that uh, has also a history. So we showed that uh, perspectives can change. Um, and people could read this in those uh, iPads. Uh, we didn't make a kind of hierarchy in it, so you could swipe through all different angles that were given. And we saw that people really get into it and really start thinking about what am I seeing then? If he, he or she sees this and he or she sees that, what, what am I seeing and what do I think of this subject? And in the end, we made a nice, uh, more uh, art, uh, artistic statement uh, and we made a big, the, the Maris House of Sugar because it was also in the past already taught the Sugar Palace because of those slave history. Um, it was an important exhibition for the Maurits House because it was, they were a bit traditional before this and um, uh, very um, yeah, exclusive almost for the elite of The Hague. Uh, it was uh, nearby the, the, the place where the prime minister uh, is, is, is working. Um, and this, uh, by, by telling the story and by looking at, uh, at their selves like this, the, the institute reopened really up um, and they really took this, this story very personal um, uh, and um, they deliberately searched this position. And, uh, Emily Gordenker, who is now director of the Van Gogh Museum, she said, well, there is a big gray area and we as a museum want to be in that gray area. We want to ask questions. We want to invite people to, to think and to, to we, we don't own the truth. We are part of the searches for meaning and for uh, where we are. And um, well, the, the Institute really changed after this exhibition. Um, and yeah, we helped with, with making this, with helping them with making this story and by uh, making the meaning of the story and the emotion explicit. So, we think that that can help to make stories unforgettable and with that also make experiences unforgettable. Of course, the story is not the only part, part of, of a museum experience, also the building and also the media and of course the objects that are all parts of, of the whole experience. But the story is, is one of the elements that you as a designer have influence on and that you can steer. Um, so content design is a way to create meaningful stories and unforgettable experiences. Because museums are meaningful places, you must be aware of that. So you have to pinpoint what is the meaning of this story that I'm telling. Because if you're not doing it, you are like the, the boy I showed at the beginning. You are in the museum and you think, why, why do I have to look, look at this? Why, why am I here? I'm going to look on my phone and, and wait till I can go away. Um, museums can tell very emotional stories and they can have a genre and it's uh, make use of that. Try to pinpoint what is the, what do you want your visitors to feel when, when, when they are in your museum and when they are leaving. Um, because what you feel stays with you and you can use emotion design to define this meaningful story and emotion. And um, well, of course we, we can help with that, but what's very important is that it helps you to place your institution in the middle of your public and your society. And it is that also made, make, make it, it makes you vulnerable because you are opening up and you are, you, you are saying why you are important. So uh, making a story is a very personal thing and a very, um, well, you have to, to be a little bit brave to do it because you have to take a stance, you have to say, I think it's important that you listen to me because this is what uh, what what uh, this story can mean for you. And by doing that, of course, you have to understand your public and you have to understand the society where you are living in. You have to be very open um, and it's very important that you talk a lot about it. And what we see a lot, uh, a lot of the time in uh, when we are um, uh, when we are working for for museums. And we do a lot of sessions like this, and we then, then we take the, in the people of the museum all around the table, and we talk for half a day, and we just ask simple questions: For who are you making your exhibition? 
Why are you making your exhibition? What is it about? Uh, where is your exhibition? When is your exhibition? By answering those simple questions, we get a conversation and we get a kind of atmosphere in which people, all of them can say, well, I really want to feel let people fall in love with with uh, with the, the art that I'm having, or I really want to, I, I really have a message because never again did this or that. And um, it is important to talk to each other. So what I want to, that's the last thing I'm going to say is just when you are designing an, an exhibition, be clear about what's the meaning of the story you're telling and what's the emotion and talk about it and dare to speak out because the, the more explicit you are, the better your exhibition will be. That is our experience. Um, that was it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pepin. So we had more than 160 people from all over Europe and beyond listening to your talk about emotion design, the emotion design approach. Thank you very much. And we had, uh, I have a lot of questions and some are quite long and deep. I think, um, uh, yeah, I can redirect them to you, Pepin, uh, later on, maybe through LinkedIn or uh, via email. Uh, maybe there is a um, uh, place for one question that a lot of people were interested in about this, again, big topic of um, AI, <laughs> Gen <laughs> and I. <laughs> yeah, I know, but maybe you can just give us a, a small insight of in, about if um, if you're using it in your work uh, to create story uh, storytelling in the museums um, and um, how to connect this uh, technology with uh, with the visitors, uh, this was something um, people were interested in. Yeah. I know we don't have a lot of time, but maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah we actually did a project uh, in which we, uh, it was uh, the project I showed at the beginning of the Film Museum I. And there we used uh, AI in a very uh, early stage. We, we started the project three years ago. Um, and during the project, we used more and more AI. Um, what we used it there for is to, um, uh, to get a new angle on a collection. So what we did, we analyzed uh, all the moving yeah, move material, all the films, all the digitized films. Um, the museum chose chose a thousand films. We all uh, let the computer analyze them. And um, we let the computer make uh, kind of comparisons. So the, the AI said, well, in these shots, there are all circles, for instance. Or in the, 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 these are all shots in movies that are red. Or these are uh, in these uh, uh, scenes are all cars. Or here are all close-ups. And we make a kind of new uh, uh, collections, so to say, of, of short scenes and short, short shots that um, that were made by the computer, not not by people. So not by an, um, a curator who said, "Well, this is an important movie because it's about whatever." Uh, but the computer made the, the 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 collections of the shots and of the of the presentation, um, and. Um, the, we projected them uh, around you, and you could use, you could choose uh, as a visitor uh, the, the, the different collections, and you get a totally new, um, yeah, a new perspective on the collection because you sh you were shown movie fragments from movies from all over the world, all over the time, but they all were red. Does it mean something? Maybe, maybe it are all movies of love, or maybe it does mean something else. But it was a very good starting point of exploring the exhibition. And we see that people really dive into and use it as, as a starting point. So that was a very early, um, uh, early uh, use of, of AI. Um, we are now uh, exploring it to, to uh, use it on yeah, more smaller tasks, uh, in which we can, can use it, for instance, by making um, uh, mood images. Uh, we made an installation in which we want to. Had, we had a certain uh, image in mind, um, and we we 
used uh, uh, AI to, yeah, to come up with this image and we modeled it uh, after AI. So that's, that's also a very literal uh, way of using AI. But of course, we can also use it to make text shorter or to, uh, to help. Uh, we do a lot in English and as you, as you hear, my English is not perfect. So when we are making English text and communicate with the clients over the world, we can use AI to make our text better. Uh, you say check check uh, check the English, so you can also use AI for very small tasks, uh, not for the big idea, but for for the small things, so that your work is more efficient. So we are trying on on a, on a broad way, um, trying to 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 see where we can use it. Thank you. Um, maybe uh, one last question. <laughs> remaining minutes. Um, so we've heard a lot about um, the museums, how they should uh, tell the story and um, about the design. Um, what about the visitors, the personal visitor stories? Um, what is a good way to, to listen to them and to implement uh, those uh, personal stories um, uh, in this whole design? Yeah, it's a very big question. Um, Three minutes. <laughs> yeah, I think the museums are still, there can be, uh, the, 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 we can make a lot of profit there. There's a lot of space to explore. And one of the first things is um, um, a lot of the time museums don't, uh, are afraid of choosing a an, an public. So uh, each commercial company can tell you that they choose their public. Uh, even the biggest, the IKEA chooses for young people who are going to furnish the first home. And you think that is a very small target group. Yeah, it is, but they are the biggest uh, biggest company for for um, uh, furnishing. Um, so it 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 helps if you choose very deliberately a target group. The Naturalis Museum, the Nature Museum in the Netherlands chooses for a target group that doesn't know a lot about nature, that chooses between a museum or an amusement park. So all the experts were angry on the museum because they missed a collection of little insects. But they say, well, insects are not nice animals to look at. We only want big, fluffy, uh, nice animals. And of course, that's, that's almost like um, cursing in the church, so to say. Uh, but there are now half a million visitors per year and they are really loving uh, the museum that are not uh, our colleagues, <laughs> so to say, but it are people who otherwise never go to a museum. So it's very valuable. So I think the first thing you have to do is try to really understand what your public is and what your public wants by simply asking them, observing them, choosing for a target group, seeing what they really like and not thinking of yourself. A lot of the time, we heard also museums say, yeah, I like this, but it's not interesting. You are not making it for yourself. You are making it for your target group. So that is the first thing of getting your visitors in. Um, of course, the, the um, Museum of the, the Broken Relationships in, in Zagreb, that is a very nice example of uh, crowd, crowd, yeah, almost sourcing of stories and of material. Uh, they have a very specific question sent in an object that has to do with a broken relation. Um, and they, well, they, 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 the, whole, the whole concept is built on this. So that is very important that you, that you make it, if you want to, to make a, uh, to give place for stories of your visitors, you really do it. Don't do it just at the side with a sticky note, but really make it part of your experience. And um, that is also, if you are going, for instance, um, incorporate uh, certain groups of, or minorities in, in, in your city where you're making a museum, just don't ask them to, to just make a little thing, but then give them the podium and, and give them the room to make, make such a thing. So also, the, yeah, choose, 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 choose. That, that is a very important thing and, and speak out. And if you say, I want my visitor to be part of it, let it be. On the other hand, I believe 
Ford said it, that um, if he uh, would ask the people, they still drive horses. And the, you are also, as a designer, you are, and I think museums are also designers because you make stories and, and exp expositions. You are also a kind of front runner and you are making something that people cannot make themselves. I'm also going to a restaurant to eat what the chef makes, not what I make myself, because I know what I can make for myself. And if I really want to eat good, I go to a restaurant and I ask the chef, please give me the, the best you have. And um, so, yeah, sometimes it's not always the, the way to go to, to incorporate the, the visitor. But if you think it's, it's a part, then just do it for 100%. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Pepin, for this hour. It's always too short. I just hope for every one of us that we that our next museum visit will be very emotional. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, uh, all of you here, you see a lot of thank you, um, mm -hmm. from all those people. Um, please get in touch with Pepin um, if you have further questions or with us. And um, Thank you very much. All the best. Thank you, too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.